So here we have a round with me and Jeff. This is just a guard retention round. Um, just working outside retention. Uh, this is a good round for really seeing like the retention, like side guard retention person really negating the hooks passing around to the outside uh so from here i'll get it started and i'll keep going through it we'll go regular speed here okay here jeff's trying to make his way to the outside and i'm really just pummeling the main thing here is focusing on frames keeping my opponent in front of me and making sure that I'm always controlling the inside corners. I'm going to go back a little bit and I'm going to slow it down at a couple points. Um, so slow it down just a little bit. And now from here. Okay, here I'm using my hand to create the frame. And I'm really trying to make sure that I'm keeping this knee inside pointed towards the floor. My other hand is creating a frame at that top shoulder. So I'm going to go back again. A little bit and slow it down again a little bit more just to really show the framing and now i'm making sure to keep control you see how this arm here is controlling inside that shoulder because when i see jeff starts to move around north south i'm going to concentrate on bringing that knee inside so i'm really trying to bring that knee inside to maintain distance keep my knees to chest and then that makes jeff kind of want to back out because he can feel that i'm going to be able to maintain the inside space i'm making sure the most likely I'm framing my guard on that far side. I used my foot, but I should be using my hand. And then I'm just pummeling back to the inside there. So I'll bring up the speed again one time. Let's look here. Now we're back on the outside again. Just concentrating on trying to keep Jeff in front of me. He's controlling my ankles. I'm framing. And right there, another opportunity where I recover from north south so we're here i'm gonna slow this down just a little bit here and boom right here now jeff's moving around north south from here what i need to make sure that i do is see how my knees come in right away once my knees come in then i can start concentrating on curving my spine and then i'm concentrating on just getting my feet back to the inside here i started to look to attack a k-guard option there uh, just looking for that scoop grip there. And then right away, Jeff clears, but that's fine. I'm still able to retain from here. I'll speed it back up right away. Actually, slow it down here. I'm using consistently looking to pummel inside this bicep while framing his far bicep. So I'm getting a little bit of a diagonal control, but I have about three points of control there. Pummeling over the head, and then he switches sides from here. Now, let's speed it up again here keeping my connection, my knee and elbow connected on the inside here, that inside hip, keeping my side guard and then framing my hip on this far side. I'm framing my hip because I really got to keep him from being able to turn my hips away. Where he turns my hips away is where my side guard starts to get broken down. So I can't allow my hips to get turned away from here. I got to make sure my hips are staying nice and uh, turned towards him or flush on the mat from here. Here, just being a little bit more defensive. And now right away, see how I'm getting my knees inside? I'm always, anytime somebody circles around north-south, if they do happen to get north-south, I'm really concentrating on getting at least one knee inside the shoulder, either the far side or near side, but I got to get a knee inside the shoulder just so that helps me recover. Again, I'm framing here on my far side, recovering, inverting to then enter there. There was an opportunity just to enter at the, as he moved north-south. He committed his hips forward and gave me an option there. Again, we're here retaining always pump always focusing on trying to pummel inside just like kind of almost bicep uh just like lacing my legs through just lacing through framing and just recovering there and then here's me working to try to pass jeff doing a good job from here just like keeping me from passing here and just kind of speed through this so yeah what i'm doing is this is good to see kind of is every time now, Jeff is kind of playing the same guard that I would play here. So every time I move around on the outside here, Jeff is trying to keep his body turned towards me with a side guard. But you see how I start bringing my chest in heavy? Where the side guard starts to break down is when I start to turn his hips away. So where his mistake was is that he was allowing me to turn his hips away. 
So I really got to just focus on I'm turning those hips away and I'm kind of trying to expose this thigh. And then when I expose that, I'm able to start making my way past. So anytime I'm trying to pass that side guard, I kind of want to create that misalignment where his shoulders are facing me and uh, his shoulders are flat and he's uh, turning his hips away, switching sides. And then again, you see how right away I'm bringing my chest in heavy. Okay, so where Jeff needs to do is he then brings his knee inside is just really concentrating on not allowing me to, to, to turn his hips and knees away. So right here, he's got to really focus on not allowing me to turn his hips and knees away. You could see from here, getting a knee inside the shoulder, it makes it really hard. And then right there. So then we're there. Same thing. Same thing. It's good seeing it from this position too. My job is to try to keep staying on the outside. Jeff's job is to keep trying to keep that side guard, keep framing, and I'm just going to keep switching sides here. And keep switching sides and my goal is to be able to again when I get to the outside look to turn him away so I'm really going to try to turn him away from there and here Jeff's doing a better job he's keeping this knee and elbow connection here framing he has the inside position from here he has inside position and then I gotta start to work my way see he tried to push me away with that knee and the second he tried to push me away with that knee, his side guard got broken down and he lost the connection and his hips got misaligned from there. He got turned away too much from there and that's no good. From here, I think I was playing more of an offensive guard because this was, we were doing one minute rounds here. Uh, so with these one minute rounds, my goal is to try to get on top within a minute, score within the minute. Um, so I was playing a little bit more of an offensive guard here. Just right away, right away, just looking to get connections. So if I go back, you see the second second we engage the guard so we're here we engage the guard here okay so the second we go to pull all right i'm starting on bottom right away i want to look to establish some kind of grips and i want to start to look to get to my reverse guard so i get a nice solid connection here i have three points of connection there and then when i have three points of connection i can start to work so now i'm in a good position to start working from here and then it was just a matter of trying to create a turn. I was just trying to create connections here. I'm always looking for three points of connection and trying to create my, especially if I'm looking to sweep, I'm always looking to try to create turns, get him turning away where it's easier for me to try to chase the top position. I could skip through this. Not much guard retention. You could see Jeff doing a good job of just keeping his knees glued to chest while I'm trying to, pressure forward in the knee cut see how he's keeping everything inside so you see how he's not giving up this position i can't accept this knee getting beat if i'm the bottom person so jeff's doing a very good job controlling this inside space here and then doing a good job using his hook to just redirect my weight overhead every time i try to pressure forward he's keeping his knees pinched so i can't drive my knee in the middle he's not giving me this control of this uh inside space here but I'm slowly trying to work my way. See how when I pummel to the outside, I'm able to gain that inside space. And then from here, we're right back into that side guard position. Now, yeah, timer was up, I think, but yeah. but So it's really denying the inside control there. Here we're getting more into another round me on bottom. I'm looking to make grips, and I was playing more of a reverse guard, almost like a De Hiva style guard. Trying to control his posture here just to keep him from switching sides. So every time he tries to switch sides, I can off balance him. So when I had that collar tie there in that position, it was just that if he did try to switch sides, I could pull down on that collar tie and create a good off balance that stops him from being able to switch sides if he clears the hook. And I was really just using a lot of reaps here to try to cause turns. There's just a lot of reaping, just uh, using the Hoffa Mendez and like Cobrino method of like scoring adcc rules just like a lot of back exposure it's easier to score back points than than it is uh trying to sweep somebody because the, the rules are so difficult so let me go back to that real quick so cutting from this outside ashi position the second i see that jeff is starting to clear that right away see i bring my knee in and i bring my foot inside the shoulder so right away, I'm starting to recover. I'm recovering early. The second that I feel that I'm still going to get in trouble here, right away, see, I control the wrist there, okay? So right away, I'm always looking for... Wrist control is very important. So in retaining the guard, especially, I think it's important that 
you're kind of like always looking to control the risks too because now here right so i'm going to look to control this risk so jeff is trying to push down i'm going to look to control this risk just just to prevent him from being able to grab my knee and throw my legs out of the way right away so if i didn't control that wrist he might be able to throw my legs out of the way the second he clears the outside ashi so i made sure just to really control that wrist as he went to clear so that i know that that hand's not going to be grabbing my ankle for a leg drag, or I know that hand's not going to be uh, starting to assist him in working his way to a uh, knee and hip, like outside passing motion, controlling that wrist. Boom, keep that, and that opens up my ability to get my knee, and then I'm just pummeling my foot over, and then my goal is just to get him back in front of me. I get my three points of connection here, and then I'm looking to try to continue off balancing and then start attacking there. So back to full speed. Looking to create my off balancing, pummeling inside, and then looking to chase and come up from bottom. All right, here's a round with Lewis. Right away, pull. Right away, I'm looking to make connection. So right away, the second, once I engage the guard, I'm looking to make strong connections i was looking for a reverse guard kind of settled in so we're here i'm looking to kind of like threaten front headlocks here right away i get my k hook and then from there i start to look to attack a k guard entry when his knees passing through the middle here it's going to be hard for me to get that elevation there so weaving my foot through to help me with creating off balance and then i start to attack so everything's Anytime I'm going to attack in the guard, I, so most of the time you're going to have to create off balance first. You're not going to be able to just go right into it. Skip through this a little bit. Find more guard retention. Lewis is doing a good job. Was doing a good job from there, like just retaining here. He's doing a good job just pummeling inside. And, and if you see, Lewis did a very good job controlling my wrist. So that inside wrist here. So let me... Slow this down a little bit. And then, look, once we get to here, I come up. And then look how Lewis is going to control my left wrist as I try to use a grip here to move that away. You see, then he's able to make a K-hook there. Now roll with Joe there. Okay. Keeping him in front of me and right away looking to make my upper body grips foot posts and right away i make sure that i right away i make sure that i make my connections so that i can't get going and then start looking to attack creating off balancing here i was looking to use uh more of like a crab style guard to create back exposure inverting underneath almost into like a waiter's barambolo type position speed that up Keeping my knees to chest, staying nice and attached. If you see here, my side guard hook comes in, and that's what allows me to start throwing on this coil. And I just use that to get on top. I didn't feel it was there to sell out on it, but the thing that's important here for retention-wise is just making sure that once I felt here, right, I went for my K-guard here, right? So we went here, and I went for my K-guard here. He took a scoop grip here. Now, from here, I kept my scoop grip, controlled this wrist. And then from here, I weave this foot across so that he can't just circle around to my back. Controlling this wrist, I'm able to put this shoulder lock pressure on. He pulled away, and that's what allowed me to come up. But then there is a shoulder lock from there as well that I can finish that shoulder lock uh, if they leave their arm in there. 